Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of embryology and early development. Now, in some of the previous videos, we discussed fertilization and the latter part of oogenesis. Now, with fertilization, uh, this is simply the act of a sperm cell called a spermatozoa penetrating the egg, which in this case would be a secondary oocyte. So this cell has not yet finished uh, meiosis II and it is not yet a zygote. Fertilization is simply the penetration of this egg. In fact, it does not even uh, necessitate the dumping in of the DNA from the sperm cell into the, into the secondary oocyte. Fertilization is simply the penetration part. But of course, after that penetration part, we get the dumping of the DNA in the form of a pronucleus from the sperm cell into the secondary oocyte. And then the secondary oocyte gets the signal to finish meiosis II. So it will become an ootid and then an ovum. And then finally, once those pronuclei fuse to a mature nucleus, that's the point where we have a zygote. And if that is a little confusing to you, please go watch the video where we actually discussed oogenesis and a little few misconceptions about it. I'll put a link to that in the description. But here we're going to pick up with the actual zygote. Okay, so here's our zygote in day one. Now recall that fertilization actually occurred in the ampulla of the fallopian tube. So from the ovary after ovulation, the secondary oocyte actually doesn't have to travel very far. It goes through these fimbriae into the, uh, uh, into the infundibulum and then into this ampulla region where it's fertilized by a sperm cell. So that sperm cell had to travel all the way up through the vaginal orifice through the vagina, through the cervical canal, through the uh, uterus, and then through the correct fallopian tube, and then all the way to this ampular region of the fallopian tube. And when fertilization occurs, we get a zygote. And so by day one, that secondary oocyte post-fertilization has matured into a zygote. Now, the zygote is going to divide. Uh, hopefully by this point we know that we're going to get a two-cell stage and a four-cell stage and so on and so forth. However, this division of the zygote is not going to occur by mitosis. It's actually going to occur by a process called cleavage, which shares some similarities to mitosis, but it is very different and we need to understand those differences. And so we're going to be talking about cleavage here in this video, and then also just the general process of development from the zygote into something called a blastocyst. Okay. So here, mitosis versus zygotic cleavage. What's the difference? Okay, so on the left here, we have mitosis. So here's our parent cell, regular circular cell with a nucleus, and it's going to divide, and it's going to divide into two identical daughter cells. Notice each of these cells appears identical to the parent, and that's a, that's a, a characteristic of mitosis. Generally speaking, the daughter cells ought to be identical. Okay, uh, they are basically clones. Okay, they have the same DNA, and they're going to be the same size as the original parent cell. And so, when we're looking at mitosis, uh, we actually have to go through interphase prior to the cell dividing. And if we think about it, there's two major reasons. One has to do with the replication of that DNA in the S phase of interphase. I mean, if these two daughter cells are to have identical DNA and you're dividing the cell in half, it would make sense you'd have to replicate the DNA in the parent cell prior to dividing in the M phase, which is mitosis, where division actually occurs. So the DNA would have to be replicated, so you have to go through the S phase. But also, you have to go through these G1 and G2 phases that flank the S phase. And these Gs stand for growth. Logically speaking, if uh, we wanted to divide this parent cell in half, and get identical daughter cells, which are identical in size, this parent cell would roughly have to double in size, right? It would have to double in size first before it divides into two identically sized daughter cells. So G1 and G2, the cell's gonna have to grow, okay? That is the parent cell. And of course, there's other things happening in G1 and G2. There's also organella replications like the mitochondria replicate, the centrosomes replicate, etc. Uh, but the, the idea of the cell has to grow. Okay, 
And that's one of the major things occurring in these G, G phases, particularly G1. Now, cleavage is different, okay? Uh, you'll notice when we look at the general progression of cleavage, you don't see any growth phases. So we're just going to have an S phase, an interphase, mitosis. S phase, mitosis. S phase, mitosis. So here's an example of cleavage. This actually would be a zygote right here. And it goes through a cleavage. And notice we do get two cells here. But notice they're each basically half the size as the original. Okay. So cell gets divided in half. You now have two daughter cells that are half the size of the original. Now, do these cells have the same DNA? Yes, they have the same DNA because we still have the S phase in cleavage during interphase. Okay? So the DNA in the parent cell is replicated and then that division occurs. So that means the replicated DNA would be equally apportioned between these two daughter cells. And so you don't have to worry about you know, having the number of chromosomes. So the same number of DNA molecules. However, the size of these cells is roughly half that of the original. And why is that? That's because we don't have any growth phases. There's no G1 or G2 phases in when we have cleavage going on. Okay? Um, and there are mechanisms in place inside uh, the cell when this is going on, inside the zygote and resulting daughter cells that basically allow interphase to bypass G1 and G2. Okay? The zygote is actually pretty big. I think we know uh, that the oocyte, that is the egg cells, are fairly large cells. Okay? So that being said, the zygote's about the same size. The zygote's a pretty big cell. And so it can actually afford to be split many, many times over without growing in size. Um, and then by the time all that's over with, all the cleavage events, you're going to have cells that are going to be roughly the same size as an, a regular cell that you'd have in an adult body. So this zygote's pretty big, so it can afford to be cleaved without growth. And we're going to see many, many cleavage events, and these cells are going to get progressively smaller because they're not growing. So if we go back to this of what we see in the fallopian tube, when we undergo one cleavage again, we, event, we get the two-cell stage then each one of these daughter cells is going to divide and we'll go from a two cell stage to a four cell stage and then those will all divide and you'll get an eight cell stage. So here, here's a good diagram of this. Start with the zygote. First cleavage event gives us the two cell embryo. In fact, at this point, this uh, mass of cells is called an embryo. This is embryonic development. And embryonic development pretty much is going to occur between everything from fertilization all the way up through implantation, uh, which we'll actually see briefly in a few minutes. Also, these embryonic cells right here are each called blastomeres. So for example, in the two-cell embryo, also called the two-cell stage, each one of these cells is called a blastomere. So when the zygote undergoes one cleavage event, you're going to get two blastomeres. All right? Now the two cell embryo is going to undergo cleavage again. And if we assume both of these undergo cleavage at roughly the same time, then we're going to get a four cell embryo. Sorry about the beeping there on my phone, having a conversation. And so now we have four total blastomeres. And then you can imagine the four cell embryo is going to undergo another cleavage event, and we get an eight cell embryo. Okay. Now, when the eight cell embryo, so eight blastomeres, undergoes cleavage, assuming all of these undergo cleavage, you're going to have 16 cells here, or 16 blastomeres. When you end up in this 16 cell stage, this cluster of cells gets a special name. It's called a morula. All right, and actually, I don't think it's visible here on the uh, on the uh, this journey here through the fallopian tube. But the morula is going to exist somewhere uh, between about days four and five. Okay, that's when we see the morula. Right now, the morula is going to undergo more cleavage events, but it's not really worth talking about you know a thirty-two cell cell stage versus a sixty-four because what starts to happen after you get through the morula stage is you no longer have synchronous cleavages. 
Okay, so some of these might undergo cleavage at different times than the others. So you will not get exactly a 32 cell stage and a 64 cell stage and so on and so forth. Okay, that won't happen. So up to this point, they're pretty much synchronous or almost synchronous. Now they're going to be asynchronous and so it's not worth talking about that. But the point is you're going to undergo a lot of cleavage events and you're eventually going to get to a structure called a blastocyst. Now the blastocyst is going to sort of look like this. You're going to have a, a spherical wall of cells right here, okay? And most of the inside of the blastocyst is going to be hollow. In fact, this hollow region inside the blastocyst is called a blastocele. I think I have to spell it like this, a blastocele. Not really intuitive on the pronunciation. That's the hollow region here inside the blastocyst. But down here, the very bottom, we have what's referred to as the inner cell mass. Okay? It turns out that the inner cell mass right here, these cells colored green and red, are actually going to become the germ cells, meaning they're going to become the endoderm, the ectoderm, and the mesoderm. Uh, but they're not going to become that or differentiate into that for a little bit. Okay, so this cleavage, as I mentioned, is going to continue until this larger, partially hollow structure called a blastocyst is formed. Now, you might be asking, why is the blastocyst larger um, if the zygote wasn't undergoing any growth? It was just cleaving. Well, it's larger overall because most of it's hollow. So the cells are kind of able to spread out farther and increase the overall diameter of the structure. So that means that the blastocyst is going to end up being larger than the zygote. It's mostly hollow. And if we look at the typical size of a blastocyst, this depends strongly on the species, but the blastocyst is gonna be anywhere between one-tenth and two-tenths of a millimeter and comprise anywhere between 200 and 300 cells, okay? Now, if we go back to this picture right here, uh, the blastocyst is going to exit the fallopian tube into the uterus. And when that occurs, it's actually going to shed its outer layer of cells called the zona pellucida. And whenever the zona pellucida is released uh, from the blastocyst, that's called hatching. Okay, so hatching means something different in mammals than it does in, let's say, birds. You know, we, an egg hatches means something different when we're talking about humans. And we're going to explore the process of hatching in a future video. So if you didn't understand the zona pellucida being uh, frilled off, don't worry about that. But the main point I want to emphasize here is that this blastocyst is going to come down here uh, near the uterine wall, sort of here near the top of the uterus, and it's going to implant in the uterine wall. I mentioned this in the reproductive system playlist that the layer here that's closest to the lumen of the uterus, um, this is actually called uh, the endometrium. That's the inner layer. And so the implantation of this blastocyst in the uterine wall is going to actually occur in the endometrium. And once that blastocyst implants in the uterine wall, uh, that's where it's going to develop for a significant amount of time. Eventually, you'll be able to see a fetus growing in the lumen of the uterus. Uh, but for now, this is where development is going to occur. And again, the process of hatching all the way through implantation, and then even the processes that occur in the uterine wall, we're going to be discussing those uh, over the course of the next few videos. Okay. But before we conclude this video, I just want to show you some very, very cool images. These are taken on scanning electron microscopes. It's a very powerful technique that allows you to get extraordinarily high resolution images of some of these structures. Now, they don't actually color like this. These are um, colors added in so we can actually see different pieces. But this right here, this is actually a human secondary oocyte. Okay. Over here, you actually see the process of fertilization. Now, I don't know which one of these sperm cells actually fertilized the secondary oocyte, but you can see here a few other sperm cells, and the unfortunate ones didn't make it there in time. Only one sperm cell will be able to fertilize the egg. And once we have fertilization, of course, it's going to mature to a zygote. We're going to have several cleavage events until we get to, here's an eight cell stage. Now we can only see five of the cells right here. That must mean that the other three are actually on the back side of this. We can go undergo one more cleavage event or set of cleavage events and we get to the 16 cell stage or the 16 cell embryo called the morula. Now notice that the morula, it's not a perfect uh, a circular shape of cells or circular cluster of cells. Okay, it could be a little bit oblong like it's shown here. It's not perfect, but again, this would be about 16 cells.
And then after many cleavage events, here would actually be a blastocyst. And this little green thing right there, that's actually the tip of a needle. So they actually have this blastocyst sitting on a tip of a needle just to kind of manipulate it and put it into the proper position so they could actually take this picture. Okay? And this blastocyst, we're looking at the outside of it. So for the inside of it, most of it would actually be hollow. Um, because that would be the blastocele, and then also not visible on the inside would be the inner cell mass, and those cells would eventually develop into the germ cells, that is the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. But I just thought this would be really cool to show you that now with the advancements of technology, we can actually zoom in on these very small cells or clusters of cells and get really neat images to better understand what's going on. Also, the colors are pretty neat too. All right, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Again, in the next video, we're gonna talk about the process more of hatching of the blastocyst and then leading up to implantation. Join us then, make sure to like and subscribe.